Hey guys, it's Andy here from the Mac Pro Club, and today I'm going to be showing you how to build a computer. This will probably be an extremely long video, so uh, sit tight and hope and pray that you don't have anything uh, important to do because this will take a fair while. So the first thing you want to do is uh, get your motherboard and take it out of its box and uh, leave the box right there because you're going to need to use that as a uh, stand for your computer because what we will be doing is called breadboarding which is basically building the uh, most important parts of the computer on the exterior of the case so that you can um, make sure that all the parts work before putting them in your case and if they don't work when they're in the case then well what do you know you've got to take everything out again so yeah so what you're going to need to do before you go and put your motherboard down is take out your uh, manual for the computer uh, what is that? and somewhere in here you're going to find information about uh, what uh, slots to put your RAM in well unfortunately for me I cannot actually find what uh, slots to put the RAM in so I'm going to assume that it's the first and the third slots from the CPU so knowing that the dual channel thing so it's probably the blue slots on the motherboard. So you uh, get your motherboard out and just uh, put it on your um, box with the edge of it just off the side. If you have a, any expansion cards that you're going to be using, like a graphics card, which is suggested to be used in your breadboarding. So once you've got it all set up like this, you're going to want to get your CPU from its box, which I shall do right now. And you'll see that it does come in a protective case for it. So what you're going to need to do is get your um, the CPU socket, which is this thing here, and pull, push the pin, the bracket down and up. Then the socket will open up like so. You can then go and remove uh, this shield thing, which protects the pins. And you can then go and open your CPU and touch a metal surface, which is probably what I should have done before. So I'll touch my computer case, which I have behind me. Touch, touch, touch. That just protect, um, uh, protects your thing, your parts from electric, electrostatic discharge, which will basically kill your components, which we do not want. So you get your CPU out, and you'll see there's two little notches on the sides. And so hold it on the sides without the notches and you'll see on the motherboard there are two notches on there. So line them up and put the CPU in there. Don't press it down. Just give it a wiggle to make sure that it's in properly. Uh, close the sockets. Make sure that the pin goes underneath the socket. And close the bracket. It will feel very difficult to do that and tight. So once you've done that you can then go and get your heatsink fan and uh, install that. You'll need to get the uh, fan cable out of the little brackets for doing this and I think that's all the ones that I need to take off. So what you're going to need to do is put it right on there and you're going to need to push down on the pins in a diagonal order. So one, you, can prob you might need to lift the motherboard off so the pins can go in. And the last pin, if it will go through. And you can turn the motherboard around to make sure the little black pins have gone through. As you can see, they have. 
or at least I hope you can see. So yeah, that's in properly. So once you've done that, you can get the fan header cable and put it in the CPU fan header. And that just goes right in like that. And you can put the cable aside. Now that you've done that, you can now go and connect or insert the RAM module. So I'm using Corsair Vengeance Memory to 4GB sticks. And you can take that out of its box. And you can insert it in what appears to be the white slot because it's showing that DIM4 is the one that's closest. So I'm taking back my assumption from before that it's the closest ones. You can get these two little bracket things and push them out and do the same on the other slot that you're going to be using. Get your RAM module, you'll see there's a little notch there and there'll be a notch on the uh, RAM slot and I'm reaching around the camera and then you can just get here and push the RAM in and it'll go and uh, click in properly and you'll know the, seat, the RAM is in correctly then you can get your second stick of memory and do the exact same thing as you did with the first one so you can get your RAM and actually I'm going to take this uh, memory module out because as you can see if I go like that my bad put it back in I thought I was getting the labels incorrect like that they were flipped on each one I, I was wrong uh, get this RAM in so there the RAM is in all nice and seated and now that you've done that, you can go and connect your power supply. So you can uh, get the power supply out, like, if it will let me. Like, I'm getting the uh, little ribbon cable on the spaghetti of cables off. Not the ribbon cable, the, uh, I don't know what to call it. So you can take that off. And you also need this cable here. So, what you'll need to find is the, uh, firstly, the uh, long and thick 24 pin connector. And you'll need to move your power supply over to this side of the, the box to make it easier to use. And you'll get this long socket here in which you can get the cable and if the braiding will allow me to without making the power supply slide around connect the power to the big socket and you'll see the connector is incorrectly so after you've connected the 24 pin cable you'll need to find the uh, 8-pin CPU power cable, it should split into two with four, two 4-pin four things rather than uh, like a PCI one where it splits into a, a 3 and a 2 like that. So this one is the correct one. It's because they have different uh, voltages or something, I'm not sure. And you just uh, connect it to the 8-pin uh, connector near the CPU right here. Let's plug that in and you can then connect your power supply to power and your monitor to power and your monitor to your computer. So I shall do those things. So the video cable is now connected. You can turn your monitor on and you can now also Touch the case again to prevent electrostatic discharge, which you should do periodically. Uh, flip the switch on your power supply, 
and get a small screwdriver that is a flathead like this one and there'll be two pins down the bottom of your computer which start the computer um, and you want to sort those together so the two pins on this one are this one this one okay that's not working everything's connected properly if that doesn't work then you can always get your uh, case in my case the carbide series 200r from corsair and find your power connector cable in the spaghetti of cables that are in the case You'd only need to do if you, the screwdriver method doesn't work, and which in my case it didn't. So, unlucky to be me, but hey, okay, what can you do? So, you can get the uh, power switch header and you can connect that to the header on the motherboard, and then I shall. Uh, change the view to my screen and press the power button on my case. What have I done wrong? I must have done something horribly wrong. <laughs> unless of course I'm connecting, uh, unless of course I've connected the uh, front panel connected to the wrong port. Which I hope is what I did. Now it seems that I connected it correctly to the correct pins. Have I turned the power supply on? Yes, I have. The monitor is definitely on. See, this is why you breadboard, because otherwise you'd have to take the whole thing out of the case. on. I have no idea what I'm doing wrong. That rhymed. And this is exactly why you breadboard once again. I hope I don't have like a dead motherboard or anything. Just making sure that everything is in correctly. Isn't powering, it isn't even powering on at all. Very odd. I have no idea what I'm doing wrong. Hmm. CPU is incorrectly, I know that. The power connectors are incorrectly. Let's see if flicking the power switch on the power supply works. Yes, it did. I'm an idiot. I am an absolute idiot. I, sp I spent five minutes figuring out why this thing wouldn't turn on. The whole reason. Didn't turn my power supply on. That helped to be on the right source. Now on digital, so yeah. So it's spinning and all that. The fan is spinning. My DVI cable is incorrectly on both ends. So it appears I don't have any display output at the moment. Again, why are you breadboard? So it isn't making any beeping noises. I shall go and uh, turn the uh, computer off manually by uh, holding the power button down. 
One, two, three. Okay, computer is off. And I shall be back with a speaker, which I have hidden in my room. So I'm back with a uh, speaker. And on the motherboard, there'll be a speaker header on the bottom, which you can connect the speaker up to. You'd only need to do this if you're getting any, if you think your computer isn't working. So I'm going to turn the computer on again. Okay, there's a beep, which means the computer turned on. Something's going. Oh. And it powered off. Hmm. No, do not power off, it just spun down. So, yeah, um, the computer is spinning and all that, but no input. Hmm. Again, why I'm breadboarding. So I just turned the computer off. So I'm not receiving any error codes. So it's probably, oh, I don't know. I have no idea. What I'm going to do is get my, uh, connect my keyboard up to it and bash the delete key once I turn the computer on. It is a uh, wireless keyboard from Microsoft. And it is a very nice keyboard, in my opinion. Okay, so I've connected my keyboard up. I'm going to turn the computer on and bash the delete key. Okay, that's that's my screen brand. Okay. No idea what my screen's doing now. Who's doing that periodically? No idea what I am doing wrong. I'm going to uh, turn the computer off again and try one more time. This time ensuring that the uh, power, the um, DVR cable is connected correctly. Appears to be so. Let's try one more time before switching to VGA. doing the old thing again. So yeah, I'm going to uh, switch the uh, video connectors over to the VGA port and hope for the best. So I have switched the, v the uh, video cable over to VGA and we are going to try again once I have turned my monitor on and put it on VGA. Okay, it's already on VGA. Turn the computer on. Yes, we have boot. And it is saying processing self image not. But um, no bootable devices detected. System will enter the BIOS setup utility. So I'll just hit OK. And there we have it. We have our BIOS. So that means our computer is working. I just got to hope my uh, VGA port hasn't, I mean, DVI port hasn't just given up on me, so I'm going to uh, leave you with it for this part of the video and I'll be seeing if I can get my DVI working and I'll be back in the next video. Thank you for watching.